on screen now is an overview of today's agenda. We're going to start with a brief overview of APEX, what exactly APEX is, and what it can offer you, especially when it comes to reporting. Where we'll spend the majority of our time today is actually building a reporting solution. We'll be doing this live, and we'll be going through the various steps you see on screen now. Following that, hopefully we'll have a little time to spare for some questions and answers. Uh, we do have a lot of ground to cover today. I'm only really teasing. We'll go over if we have to to, to take any questions. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what exactly is APEX? Well, simply put, APEX is a rapid application development tool for the Oracle database. Most often it's used to build full-fledged web-based applications. Uh, but for reporting solutions, it's actually uh, perfect as well. In fact, it's a little bit easier to use for simply reporting purposes. With APEX, one can very quickly build reports on top of existing Oracle tables and views. APEX is browser-based, which means there's no client software required. And this is true both while developing and running applications. So everything you need to use APEX can be done via a browser. This is for you and your end users. APEX first became a standard component of the database with the Express Edition 10G. Now with 11G going forward, all versions of the database come with APEX ready to go. APEX is a fully supported Oracle product. In fact, there's a dedicated Oracle support team which specializes in Oracle forms and APEX only. We like to call APEX a no-cost option for the database, which means you can develop as many applications with as many users as you like within existing Oracle database license terms. And that basically boils down to whether you have a CPU or a named user license. When you first log into APEX, you'll see the icons displayed here, which correspond to the three main components of APEX. We have the application builder. This is where you'll spend the majority of your time building applications and reports within them. The SQL Workshop offers a lot of functionality. Uh, you can use some components within that to browse the database and even develop queries. We'll see how we can do that here in a little bit. As I move around in APEX, I'll be using standard web-based navigation tools such as icons, tabs, lists, and breadcrumbs. Keep in mind that APEX is built using APEX. So all of these navigational components are available to you for use in your own applications. When we get into the application builder, there are a couple pages that I'll want you to become familiar with. Those pages include the builder home page the application homepage, and the page definition screen. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is the login screen for APEX. I'll go ahead and sign in here. And as you can see, here are the three icons you saw in the previous slide. And there are corresponding tabs across the top, which allow access to the same components. When I go into or click on the Application Builder icon, we arrive at the first of the three pages I wanted to introduce you to. This is the Application Builder homepage. This page simply shows you the applications which you have access to in this workspace. In this case, there's only one, Reports Comparison. When I click on this application, we go to the second of the three pages. This is the Application homepage. It has some buttons for various functionality across the top, as well as a page listing at the bottom. This lists all of the pages associated with this particular application. Usually, these are going to be various report pages. If I click on a page, we go to the third and final page I wanted to show you, which is the page definition screen. Now, this page, as you can see, has a lot going on. In fact, for people new to APEX, it can be a little intimidating. But it's not so bad once you break it down. So let's do that. First of all, there's three columns. We have page rendering, page processing, 
and then the shared components. Page rendering has everything to do with what you see when the page is loaded. In Apex, a page is just a container, really, for various regions. The regions will be your reports and your charts. Inside of a region, you can add buttons and items. So this is everything that you're going to see on the page right here. Page processing really is used more often for, for full-fledged web applications, not so much for reporting. So you won't be using this, uh, this column as often, but you will from time to time, especially when it comes to branches. Finally, the column on the left, the shared components, is really just a collection of convenient links. Uh, the more you use Apex, the more these links become useful. They just save you a couple clicks, taking you right to where you want to go. So really, it's, it's the left column that you want to focus on. Now, I'm going to use the breadcrumb to go all the way back to the first of the three pages that I wanted to show you, the Application Builder homepage. And this is what I mean by breadcrumb. As I've come deeper into Apex, this breadcrumb has been leaving a trail for me to go back to where I came from. So I'm going to go back to the Builder page by clicking here. You can see, again, the application listings. I'll click on an application. You can see, again, the page listings. And we're back to where we came from. So we'll be talking more about breadcrumbs here in a little bit, of, uh, a little bit later. What I'd like to do now is take you over to the SQL Workshop. This is another one of the main components of Apex. And you can see that it's further divided into four components. I want to show you two today. First, the object browser, and then the query builder. We're going to use the object browser to basically browse the database. As you can see here, I have four tables in this schema. The tables are really tables that a college or a university would be familiar with. In fact, the design has been greatly simplified for today's presentation to make sure that everybody can understand the data we're looking at. Let's start by looking at the student's table. If I click the student's table, on the right-hand side, we'll see the definition of that table loaded, where you can see the column names and their data types. If you prefer to look at the actual data, that's easy enough. Just click on the Data tab. You can get a better idea of what we're dealing with. So those of you familiar with Banner, you're used to the PITM the unique identifier for a student. And then the rest of the columns are pretty self-explanatory. This is a basic student's table. Another really important table we'll be working with today is the courses table. This table holds the various courses that a college offers to its students. And of course, each semester, uh, the college will offer these on a term basis. So if we look in course offerings, you'll see a link back to the course table. And you can see the call number and term and associated credit hours. Finally, the student registrations table is what ties everything together. Here we have a link back to the student table. We have an offering ID, which goes back to course offerings. And a status column, R for registered, uh, D for dropped, and W for withdrawn. So these are the tables we're going to be working with today. And for the most part, the reports I'm going to generate, I'll be using some canned SQL I've developed ahead of time. So you didn't have to watch me stumble trying to type out some code. But for those of you who are not very familiar with SQL, I wanted to show you another tool we have available to us in the SQL Workshop. 